you guys have to listen, right? So um, this is this is. I'm a British Nigerian. I don't know why I have my phone in my hand. Just ignore it. I didn't have time to put it down. The MC did such a wonderful job of introducing me. I had to fight back all the crowd. So I'm a British Nigerian. My name's Fumbi Omotayo. I'm a Nigerian Brit, like most of you. Basically means I was born in England to Nigerian parents, so I'm staying. That was a Brexit joke. Okay, okay, we'll get there, we'll get there. Um, I grew up in a traditional Nigerian home. My parents used to say weird things like, outside there is London. In this house is Nigeria. It was actually the council's house, but you get attached to these things. My parents left the struggle in Nigeria, okay, to start another struggle in Hackney in the 80s. It wasn't cool. Is someone playing music? Can you allow me, please? I can, I can hear the music. Can we cut it? Thank you, band. I've been touring with my band for five minutes now, they didn't know. Um, yeah, I grew up uh, in the 80s when being African wasn't cool. <laughs> So like now, you know, we didn't have Anthony Joshua then. We didn't have Burner Boy then, you know. Burner Boys made it cool to be Nigerian. People just walk up to you now. Yee, 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 yee. <laughs> what is that for? Is that some kind of chant? I grew up when being African was a secret. You didn't just tell everybody, you know. Where you from for me? Why are you always asking questions from I told you? Man's from here, innit? Being African wasn't easy back in the day. We used to want to be Jamaican. Do you know how times must have how, how hard times must have been when you wanted to be Jamaican? My name wasn't even Fumbi back then, it was Fumbert. Fumbert did not place a lot of mercy. Zaga Because being African was difficult. We had to change our names, you know, we just didn't fit in, you know. We had to anglicize our names. So if you had a name like Lola, you would be Lola. I said you brought that in. Yeah. If you had a name like Shil, you know, with Sean, that's how you brought that in, right? If you had one of those hardcore names, like I can't saw you, you just went with Mike. Oh, no, no, there was no rescue in that. I grew up in your typical Nigerian home. My parents are Nigerians. I grew up in Nigeria as well. I moved to Nigeria when I was like 10. It's different. It was weird because as a kid, you know, people used to ask me about Africa and I had no idea because I've never been, you know, people used to ask me weird questions like, do they wear shoes in Africa? I was like, I don't know, I've never been. I went home asking, oh, why don't you not wear shoes, fam? Then I moved to Nigeria and I was like 10, came off the plane. First thing I realized, they wear shoes, fam. It was really weird, because I went to school there, it was really weird hearing people pronounce my name they were supposed to be pronounced. <laughs> like the teacher was like, is Fumbi here? I was like, who is this Fumbi, bro? Like, my name's Fumbi, blood. that's not me. I had to learn, I got caned in school because we had corporal punishment in Nigeria. It's not like in England, you know, you could tell your teacher, shut up, miss. In Nigeria, you tell your teacher, shut up, you wake up in a coma. <laughs> Cane was a weird experience for me. We had this thing in school called morning tea. Yeah, some Nigerians remember they having flashbacks in it. Ah, to the English people, it's not what you think. Morning tea was the cane. Every time in class, if my teacher would come in, you had to learn your times table the night before, right? You come into school the next day, they're going to test you on your times table, right? So this time, it was the full times table. I came into school ready, prepped, knew the whole thing. My teacher was walking around, stalking the class. Two times four, eight, sit down. Four times seven, that's it, two, sit down. He came to me, I was ready for this brother. He said, four times five, I said, 20. He said, good. He said, five times four. I said, <laughs> you, you said the, the four times table. You didn't say nothing about five. The whole class looking at me, it's 20 from me. He said, how would you like your, sh he said, how would you like your tea? I said, two sugars, please. He said, what? But that was my experience. African kids were developed too, like from 12. These guys had abs. Like they were not, I was not, I, I, they, I was the British kid, you know, I couldn't hang with these children, you know, I was like, what gym do you go to? He said, who is gym? I said, wow. Remember the, you know, because you know, people have a misunderstanding about Africa, you know, people think they don't wear shoes because they can't afford it. Like I used to play football with the kids and they would just take off their shoes 
So I was like, and they were like, for me, you know, you have to take off your shoes because you're going to hurt our feet if you play with us. So I said, yeah, that's cool. So I took off my shoes. Now, I didn't realize I still have British feet. This is African soil. My feet were made for the floor. These kids were running around, kicking the football, doing stepovers. They passed the ball to me because, you know, I wanted to feel like, mom, I kicked that ball and I said, listen, guys, I had to go house. I'm tired because I punctured my toe. But yes, you know, I live in England now. I'm a comedian. I'm like, you guys who made your parents proud, I kind of let the team down. I remember the first time I told my mom I wanted to be a comedian. She just laughed in my face. <laughs> you're funny. You're really funny. <laughs> He wants to be a comedian. <laughs> That's a good one, son. Tell your father that joke. That was funny. So when I when my friends asked me, what does your son do? I will now say my son is a clown. That's a good one. You should open with that. British um, from Hackney, East London. Anyone from Hackney? Close enough. Oh, we have some Hackney. Okay. Can I get a lift home after this? Piccadilly lines been locked off. Hackney's gentrified now, right? Yeah, listen, we've got a prep, a manger in Hackney. For those of you that don't know, Hackney used to have a reputation for being a very rough neighborhood, you know? But you can get homeless in Hackney now. It's gentrified, you know? We've got designer outlets, fashion boutiques. I walk around Hackney now, I think to myself, man, we need another riot. I'll get some good stuff this time, bro. It's gentrified, come to Hackney now, you see white people walking around freely, it's beautiful, man. Came out the station in Hackney, this white guy offers me drugs. It threw me off completely. And he just came out with it, trying to buy some weed. I got really offended, you know, because I was looking at him like, look at these white boys coming into our neighborhoods, taking our jobs. <laughs> I might have to vote for you, kid, because this is going to stop. We just weren't ready at the time. A lot of protesting going on. I love the protesting, man. A lot of marching. Women are marching. That's crazy, man. I went to the women's march. Not for the cause. The ratio was crazy. It was like 100 to 1. You had to scoop something. I'm on your side, ladies. I'm down with feminism. I want you guys to know whatever you guys are fighting for, I want you to get it. Yeah, and I want you guys to know, from one minority to another, okay? It's never gonna happen, okay? So, just keep hope alive. Black Lives Matter, I went to a Black Lives Matter protest. I'm no activist, you know, it was the West End. I had a couple things I needed to return. I saw the man them, I said, let's march. You know, you know, they had police everywhere, because it was the West End, you know? They thought we might start looting. I said, that's not why we're here, fam. Although when we started walking past Selfridges, I was like, hey, if the man them are on it, though, you know. And get some Dior jeans real quick. You gotta find a way to support a cause that benefits you. Because we marched for three hours. Two hours in, I was like, fam, I think you've made a point, man, seriously. Come with Nando's, man, I'm kind of peckish. You know that app in your phone that tracks your steps? I was getting notifications like, is everything okay today? You've hit your target for the year. So I said, forget that, I'm not gonna march. I'm gonna read about activism. That's what I'm gonna do, you know? So I got Huey P. Newton's book. Now Huey P. Newton was one of the founding members of the Black Panthers, you know? Because I wanted to start light. And I got the book. The book was called Revolutionary Suicide. I said, yeah, this would be a good place to start. Got the book, opened up the first book. First chapter, it said, to be a revolutionary, you must be prepared to die. I was like, let me check out Mandela's long walk to freedom instead because I want to retire from the game at some point. You guys have been um, a decent audience. I've had better, but you know. For Nigerians, this is popping, you know. Because you know Nigerians are arrogant, entertain us. Where is he from? Is he a doctor? You guys going home for Christmas? No? Have you seen the prices to Nigeria? It's like 2,000 pounds a ticket. I was like, I can go to a real country for that price. You don't need to think about what you're doing. 
when they first booked me for the show, I was kind of like, really, Nigeria and law, that's, that's weird. <laughs> I thought I should be nice, but then I figured, you know what, <clears throat> why not? I'm Nigerian, you can't say I can't lie. Um, going to church in Christmas, that's what we do, Nigerians, we love the church, right? Yeah, man, God is good. See, you, you, can't, you can just say that anywhere, Nigerians will finish, God is good all the time. Who said that? Love the church. I haven't been to church in a while. You know, I'm trying to say for the mortgages in there, but... <laughs> but God is still good. God is still good. He said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I will be there. He didn't say I had to be in the church. So I'm just gathering at home. I love African churches. That's where I grew up, man. Love that praise and worship. That's where I grew up, man. You know, I think that, you know, think about Nigeria is energy, the church. We pray. That's what we do. We have to pray. I think we pray too loud sometimes. It's a bit stressful, you know, you're trying to get your point across to God. The guy's praying so loud next to you, you start to hear his problems. He's like, Father Lord, you rash on this body, remove it. You're like, fam, you got a rash, you need to see a GP room, boy. This, this ain't the place for you, this is. You know the pastor's gonna say, shake the person next to you, you're like, nah, man, he don't, he don't shower. I gotta go, they don't pay overtime in comedy, but, um, Christine is here. I'm just gassed because she's a star. So I put on my my brothers actually played football with your brothers, but we'll get to that later. But I tried to flex my best comedy because I saw that otherwise it'd have been way more substandard than this. But you guys have been a great audience. Um, keep supporting this cause and love to see Nigerians looking sharp and you know non-Nigerians too. Thank you for coming. Okay, that was weird, but um, <laughs> I love the masks. I didn't know. What's the, is that the occasion? It's a mask ball. It's a mask ball. I'm, we appreciate you. You know Nigerians. They mask for what? Why am I wearing masks? Every day mask, mask, mask. Is it the COVID event? That's why they're not wearing masks. But don't worry, we appreciate the thought behind the theme. So you guys have been a great audience. I mean, let's get some food. Thank you very much.